Hello and welcome to Aspirin Study Circle. Today we'll try to discuss five bits with regards to international relations and five bits with respect to current affairs of both national and regional importance. Now the first question is consider the following statements about Black Sea. Now Black Sea is very important so you need to know what are the countries bordering the Black Sea. Also a few facts about Black Sea. The reason why Black Sea in news is obvious because there is a conflict between Ukraine and Russia. So the first statement is it is an island sea between the southeastern Europe and Antolia Peninsula. The second statement is it is connected to Sea of Azov via Kerch Strait. The third statement is Bosphorus Strait connects it to Sea of Marmara. And the fourth statement is Dardanelles Strait connects the Black Sea via Sea of Marmara to Aegean Sea of Mediterranean Sea. So, for you to know anything about this, let's go and look at the map. Now, this is the Black Sea. Now, this is Sea of Azov. This is the Black Sea. This is Sea of Marmara. And this is the Aegean Sea which is connected to the Mediterranean Sea. Now, the first statement says that it is between the southeastern, see, the southeastern Europe and Antolia Peninsula. So the Antolia Peninsula is situated in Turkey. And this is the southeast European country. So yes, it is located. Now, this is Sea of Azov and this is Black Sea. The strait which connects the Sea of Azov and Black Sea is the Kerch Strait. Please note it down. This is very important or you can have a map so that you can remember it well. Now, the Black Sea and the Sea of Marmara are connected via, as we've seen, this is the Bosphorus Strait. So this is the Bosphorus Strait. And the Sea of Marmara and the Aegean Sea, which is connected to the Mediterranean Sea, here we have the Strait of Dardanelles. See, we have Dardanelles Strait. So, Remember these straits, remember these seas and please do comment in the comment section as to what are the countries that border the Black Sea. So here the answer will be all of the above. Now moving on to the next question, consider the statements about B9. B9 is a group of Eastern European countries that became a part of NATO. Romania, Bulgaria, Italy, France are a part of this group. It was founded in 2015 and takes its name from Bucharest capital of Romania. Now, if you see the map, you will understand that these are the B9 countries. Now, these are the contention and the reason why Ukraine wanted to be a part of NATO, that was the reason for Russia to push its troops because there will be an eastward expansion of NATO. So this is the logic. So this, these are the Eastern European and France, Germany, these are not a part of it. They were the original members of the NATO to begin with. So Italy, France, no. So this statement will be wrong. So the correct answer would be one and three. So you need to remember that B9 is with respect to the Eastern European countries of NATO. Now moving on to the next question. Consider the following statements with regards to World Health Assembly. Now the context is the World Health Assembly is annually, of course, it is held in Geneva, Switzerland. And it was held at a special session and the decision, the titled was the World Together. So this is the second such session second such a special session so it is a decision making body of the world health organization it is held in geneva switzerland and it has it had a special session where it was titled the world together because this was after the pandemic of covid-19 and a majority of 50% is needed at the world health assembly for conventions to become agreements so this statement is wrong because the majority needed for any convention that has to be adopted to become an agreement that is the majority required is two by third. 
So the fourth statement would be wrong and the first statement. So one, two, three are correct. Moving on to the next question. Which of the following organization publishes the logistic performance index? Now, the reason why this is in news is because we have our own, there's a draft national logistic policy. Logistic policy. Okay. And the second point is the costs associated with logistics in India is very high. For example, United States has about 6 to 7 percent costs of logistics with respect to GDP. Okay, this is the percentage with respect to GDP. Now, comment in the comment section as to what is the cost, logistic costs of India. What are the logistic costs of India? So, this remains in news. So, that is the reason why we need to look into logistic performance index and it is published by the World Bank. Now, moving on to the next question, consider the following statements about Beamstech. What is Beamstech Bay of Bengal initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation? Now, the first statement is the first summit was held in 2004 in Bangkok. Its secretariat is located in Dhaka. It is a regional and economic cooperation of seven nations in the adjacent areas of Bay of Bengal, India, Thailand, Myanmar, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Bhutan. Fifth summit was held in 2022 virtually in Delhi. So here the wrong statement, look, always look for the wrong statement. So here the law, wrong statement is this. It is not, it was not held in Delhi, but it was held in Colombo. And of course, all of the other statements are correct. Yes, the first session was held in Bangkok. The secretariat is located in Dhaka. So please do note these points. And this is the most important point because it was recently held. Okay, it was recently held in 2022 in Colombo and the fourth summit just for your information the fourth such summit now this is the fifth summit the fourth summit was held in Nepal you can note down these points these may come handy because these are facts so the fourth summit was held in Nepal and the fifth summit was held in Delhi now moving on to the next question consider the following statements with regards to Samarth. See, there's another Samarth scheme which is with regards to textiles. Now, this Samarth is different which you have to understand looking at the options. Now, with reference to this, so it is an initiative of Ministry of Women and Child Development. It will provide benefits to aspiring and existing women entrepreneurs. See, the first statement, see, is wrong because it is an initiative by the Ministry of MSME, which is micro, small and medium enterprises. So recently on the occasion of International Women's Day 2022, so MSME, the Ministry of MSME ha had launched a special entrepreneurship promotion drive. So Samarth. So the first statement is wrong and the second statement is right. Now moving on to the next question. E Amrit is a web portal associated with. Now, the answer is electric vehicles. Now, let's look into the website, how it looks. So, we have this portal E Amrit. So, everything that you need. So, calls for a, our Prime Minister calls this a new mobility revolution. Okay. So, anything you want with respect to electric vehicles, if you want to buy an electric vehicle, you want to start an electric vehicle business, calculate the vehicle benefits find the charging stations, all of these are provided on e Amrit. So it's easier to remember this way. So that was the question about e Amrit. Now moving on to the next question, consider the following statements regarding Rashtriya Sanskriti Mahotsav. So RSM, we'll keep it short. So Telangana governor inaugurated the two day cultural festival Rashtriya Sanskriti Mahotsav at Hyderabad. The Rashtriya Sanskriti Mahotsav or RSM is a platform for performance and exhibition of rare and near extent art and art forms. So, Atalangana Governor Srimati Tamil Sai Saundarajan inaugurated this two day cultural festival of Rashtriya Sanskriti Mahotsav at not Hyderabad but it was Warangal. Okay, so this is a very good opportunity for traditional performing artists and craftsmen to come together under one roof. Right, so 
it is held for two days so it acts like an umbrella so under one roof there is a opportunity for them to showcase their talent so that is with regards to see it was it was held in Warangal, so that is why it becomes important right now moving on to the next question with respect to harita nidhi telangana green fund how much fee is levied on trade license fee so for setting up any business any business there will be a license fee for example you need to if you want to set up a kirana shop there will be a license fee if you want to set up a bar there will be a license fee if you want to set up uh, a, a, a sports store there will be a separate license fee so upon this license fee there will be an additional fee how much fee is levied on the trade license fee so which will be contributed to harita nidhi so the answer here is thousand now we need to know that the telangana green fund now we need to know other figures for example 0.1 percent of state government and other contracts will be going to this fund at the same time 10 percent of constituency development fund will be going again to harita nidhi and similarly as we've seen it is thousand over here and for any school student admission 10 rupees will be taken will be given to harita nidhi at the same time if an intermediate student is joining the registration fee upon that 15 rupees will go to the harita nidhi similarly 25 would be for degree students and 100 rupees would be for vocational students degree admissions so do comment in the comment section what is the amount that a government employee government employee would give at the same time what is the amount that the people representatives are supposed to give the elected members that is legislatures so what is the amount that the government employees give what is the amount that the people representatives give please do comment in the comment section this could be a bit now moving on to the next question islanding system recently seen in news is about protection of coastal area ecosystems it is a practice of isolating virus from their hosts in an efficient manner it is in relation to provide uninterrupted power supply none of the above so this is recently in news because it was established in a few important areas in hyderabad so the answer is in relation to provide uninterrupted power supply so this becomes very very important and the reason being see as we can see here see this is the utility substation so wh what is the reason see we've had uh, uh, recently in the past one two years uh, we've had uh, a blackout in mumbai and which was alleged to be cyber attacks and similarly uh, critical infrastructure like uh, uh, you know uh, various uh, thermal power plants or uh, various uh, nuclear power stations so all of them are considered as critical uh, infrastructure so in order to protect them from cyber attacks so this cutoff is being done from the substation to a small internal grid for example if this is the entire grid so if there is power outage over here there will not be power because this is very critical this is important so uh, we have seen such uh, cases with respect to uh, i'm sorry not bengal but bengaluru with respect to silicon valley our own silicon valley and uh, also with respect to oil refineries because they need to keep pumping so the idea of islanding system is to protect certain key areas from any such cyber attacks so these are the key items for today i hope you've enjoyed hope you've learned something new thank you